Hello everyone! It's time to read The Wild Robot Escapes. We might finish it today or we might go over, so this is probably going to be a little bit longer than our normal read-alouds. Um, I'm hoping to get it finished in about 20 minutes, but we'll see. Um, we left off at chapter 83. This chapter's name is The New Robot. The robot heard classical music. She smelled flowerly, flowery perfume, and when her eyes opened, she saw a wrinkled face. Hello again, Roz, said the old woman. How do you feel? Here's a picture of Roz. Hello again, Dr. Malovo. I feel different. You are different. What have you done? I destroyed Rosin Unit 7134, said the, wo said the woman. That was the only way to make people feel safe again. What nobody knows is that I transferred your old mind into the new body. I could get in a lot of trouble for saving you, but I wasn't about to destroy that remarkable mind of yours. The robot was speechless. You know, Roz, you should really be thanking me, said Dr. Malovo, arcing an eyebrow. Thank you, said Roz. Thank you very much. You're very welcome, the woman chuckled. Roz walked over to a framed mirror on the wall and studied her new body. It resembled her old body, but the proportions were slightly different. She looked stronger. She felt tougher. And there were other differences. I have no button, she said, feeling the back of her head. And I have no unit number. You've, outgr you've outgrown those things, said Dr. Malovo. If I'm not Rosin Unit 7134, who am I? I think you know who you are. The robot's computer brain didn't take long. She looked into the mirror, mirror and said, I am Roz. The old woman smiled and nodded. I appreciate all that you have done, said Roz, but I worry that my friends and family will no longer recognize me. Oh, I'm sure you can convince them of who you are, said Dr. Malovo. Speaking of your family, there's someone here to see you. Chapter 84, The New Mother. Bright Bill was there when his mother smashed against the pavement. He watched as her body parts were loaded into an airship. He followed the ship all the way back to the robot factory and perched himself up on the roof. But he didn't know what to do next. Strutter stopped by to check on Bright Bill. She encouraged him to fly home, but the goose wasn't ready to let go. His little heart still hoped his mother would come back from the dead somehow. He'd seen it happen before. As the hours passed, however, his hope was starting to fade. And then one of the roof windows automatically slid open. The goose heard gentle music coming from inside the building. He fluttered through the window. Did I say gentle goose music? I meant just gentle music coming from inside the building. He fluttered through the window and followed the music down a hallway to a wooden door. The door opened and the goose stepped in. Bright Bill waddled past tall bookshelves and leather furniture and into the middle of a large room. An old woman was sitting in a chair and a robot was standing by a mirror. The goose didn't recognize either of them. And when the robot rushed toward him, Bright Bill squawked, Say that! and scrambled away. Around the room, he went squawking and flapping until he settled onto a table in the corner, looking lost and afraid. Here's a picture of Roz on his table. I mean, Bill on his table. The robot stayed where she was. Bill, it's me, your mother. The goose just stared. I know I look different on the outside, the robot went on. 
But on the inside, I am the same. I still speak the languages of the animals, and I still remember every detail of our life together. I remember sitting around the fire in our home on the island. I remember the first time you took flight. We were up on the grassy ridge and you stretched out your wings and suddenly you were floating on the wind. But then you flopped back into the grass. And you, you must have flopped into the grass a hundred times that day. And I remember visiting the robot gravesite together. We talked about life and death. It was a tough conversation, but a good one. As the robot continued to speak, the goose began to relax. She certainly did act and sound like his mother. But Bright Bill wasn't yet convinced. If you're really my mother, he said, tell me the name of our house. The nest. Who is my best friend? Chit chat. She is a squirrel. She talks a lot. How old was I when you adopted me? You were zero. Actually, you were less than zero. I mean, you were still in your egg, but I could hear you peeping. And with those bumbling, bubbling, bumbling words, Bright Bill knew the truth. Oh, Mama, it's really you! The goose fluttered across the room and into his mother's arms. The arms were new and unfamiliar, but they were also gentle and comforting. I love you, Mama. I love you, son. From the other side of the room came the sound of sniffles. Our friend turned and saw Dr. Malovo wiping tears from her eyes. I have no idea what you two are saying, she said, but that was wonderful. Chapter 85, The Guests. After traveling in secret, after running in fear, our friends were safe at last. But their robots weren't over yet. Although Roz had a brand, oh, but their problems weren't over yet. Although Roz had a brand new body, she had the same old mind, and most humans simply weren't ready for an emotional, curious, wild robot. There was only one place where she could be her true self, and it was still far, far away. Dr. Malovo, you have already been so kind to me and my son, said the robot, but I must ask you for one last favor. The woman sat back in her chair. Could you take us home in your airship? The woman laughed. Well, of course I will. How else would you get on an island in the middle of an ocean? Time and again, Roz had dreamed of flying back to her island in an airship, but she had never thought it would actually happen until now. It's no trouble, the woman went on. We can have you home in a few hours, but I insist that you and Brightville stay a while here in my apartment. You both deserve some peace and comfort, and I love the company. There was no arguing with Dr. Malovo, and our friends agreed to stay a while. The robot butler took care of everything and everyone in the apartment, and that included guests. Roz felt funny accepting help from a robot, but Bright Bill happily soaked up the attention. The butler fed him fantastic salads made from exotic leafy plants. The butler placed a little pool in the living room so he could swim wherever he liked. Here's a picture of the little pool. The butler built a cozy bed that was just the right size and shape for the young goose. Bright Bill had never been so comfortable. Dr. Malovo divided her time between her guests and her work. She would sit around chatting with Roz and Bright Bill and then suddenly head down to the factory with some urgent task. She had to design her new robots. So, wait, she had to design new robots. She had to supervise the makers and the Ricos. She had to manage all of the tech lab industries, even at her old age, Dr. Malovo was still consumed by a passion for robots. If you love your job, it never feels like work, she'd say smiling and strolling out the door. When the host was working, the guests had the apartment to themselves. Roz spent hours br browsing the bookshelf. She read about her 
art and sciences and the history of robotics. Bright Bill waddled from room to room and explored every corner of the sprawling apartment. There is the bookshelf with Miss Ra's reading all about things. But their favorite activity was to stand by the windows, gaze across the city, and survey the incredible sights. I can see the bridge where Strutter tracked me down, said Bright Bill. And that's the building where I first met Gravy. And there's the roof where you fell. Look, far in the distance, another spaceship is taking off, said Roz. And it could be flying to the space station, or the moon, or beyond. I think the skyscraper is actually a greenhouse, said Bright Bill. I flew past it. I flew past it and saw nothing but plants inside. Roz and Bright Bill enjoyed their time in Dr. Malovo's apartment, but they missed their friends and the wilderness in the island. After a few days, the guests were growing restless. They were ready to go home. Chapter 86, The Flight. Sitting on the pavement, glint glinting in the sun, was a sleek white airship. For so long, those white ships had filled the robot with dread. Now one was about to solve all her problems. The door hummed open, and Dr. Marlovo, Roz, and Brightville climbed aboard. Once they were comfortable, the robot spoke to the airship. Take us to the island where Rosam Unit 7134 was found. The engines fired up and the ship lifted off. It floated high in the, into the air, turned to the north, and started cruising above the city. The three of them quietly watched the buildings and streets pass below. The city seemed to go on forever. But as they flew faster and farther, it slowly gave way to the towns and countryside. They crossed the hard edge of the skyline, and then there was only ocean and the sky and the airship. Here is a picture of them in the airship over the ocean. The ocean was deep. However, scattered throughout the dark depths were shallow areas, sandbars, reefs, islands, just under the waves. In places, bizarre rock formations st stuck up from the shallows. Or were they the ruins of old buildings? The mysterious shapes faded behind the airship and were replaced by more dark depths. The ship flew on and, and the hours flew by. Gradually, fluffy clouds came into view on the edge of the horizon. Beneath the clouds was a faint smudge of green. The island. It's, it grew closer and bigger, and then Roz was gazing out at all the places she'd missed. The rocky shore, the mountain, and the waterfall, the forest, the meadows, and the ponds. Air blasted toward the ground as the ship lowered itself into a grassy clearing. It gently touched down, and the engines powered off. Chapter 87, The Homecoming. The airship's doors hummed open and our robot stepped outside. Everything was still and silent. But Roz knew hiding, hidden animals were watching and she greeted them with a mighty roar. Animals of the island, I have returned. I may look different, but I promise you I am your old friend Roz. Her words boomed across the island but the only response was her own voice echoing back. The wild robot needed to be wilder. So she reached down and started smearing handfuls of mud across her body. Then she pressed clumps of weeds and flowers into her muddy co coating until she looked more like her old wild self. Brightville fluttered out of the airship and perched on Roz's shoulder. He shook his tail feathers and squawked. It's true! This robot is my mother! Come see for yourselves! Silence. And then the bushes began to rustle. Faces began poking out from the trees. Animals began scurrying and trotting and flying into the meadow. At first they moved cautiously, confused as to how this new robot could be their old friend. But they saw her wild appearance and they heard her wild voice. The news began spreading across the island. Roz was back. 
a crowd of friendly creatures gathered around our robot. There was right there was Brightbill's flock, and the beaver, and the deer families, the fink and the fox, and Swooper the owl. Bears came lumbering down from the hills, and fish jumped from the ponds, and vultures circled above. Even the no nocturnal creatures crawled out from their burrows into daylight to join the celebration. Oh, how good it feels to return from a long journey and find your friends and family waiting for you. But reader, sometimes we return to find that things aren't exactly how we left them. As you know, the wilderness can be harsh, a harsh place. And while Roz was away, it had claimed its share of her friends too. The robot saw the raccoons Lumpkin and Bumpkin, but not Rumpkin. Nor did she see Broadfoot, the moose, or dig down the groundhog. Other creatures were missing as well. And so, like many of our homecomings, this one was bittersweet. Chit Chat the squirrel came bounding through the grass, chattering on and on as usual. I always knew you'd come back to ask Ross, but I never imagined you'd gain so much weight, although I guess I've gained a lot of weight, a lot of weight. Myself, anyway, you'll have to tell me all about your adventures when you get a chance. I'm sorry for talking so much. I just was so excited to see you again. Geese and beavers and deer and fish and squirrels, owls, bears and turtles and otters and raccoons and woodpeckers, opossums, moose and foxes, and every kind of creature from every corner of the island were coming to welcome back their dear friends, Roz and Brightbill. And watching it all from the airship, was Dr. Malovo. Chapter 88, The Final Farewell. Everyone, I would like you to meet the woman who designed me. Roz walked over to the strange creature standing by the ship's doorway. For most of the island animals, this was their first time seeing a human. They squinted and sniffed and whispered to each other trying to understand how such a frail old woman could create such a big, strong robot. Dr. Malovo started speaking softly to Roz, and then Roz started speaking loudly to the crowd of animals. My designer has asked me to translate her words for you, said the robot. The following words are not mine. They are hers. The crowd settled down and listened. Thank you, island animals, for saving Roz. Without your help, she would have died here long ago. But you were not only her rescuers, you were also her teachers. You taught her to be wild, and she needed all of her wilderness to survive, but in your world and in mine. As I look around at this wild paradise, I finally understand why Roz tried so hard to get back here. She does not belong with the robots and humans. She belongs on the island with all of you. We cannot risk others learning about this place. That is why I will soon leave and never return. But I promise to keep your island a secret so that all of you can live in peace. And I will spend the rest of my days filled with the wonder at the miracle that is our wild robot. The meadows fell silent. A flurry of wing beats and Brightbill landed into the grass near Dr. Malovo. He gazed up at the woman, deep into her eyes, and then he bowed his head. Then the other geese in the flock bowed their heads. Crown Point took Buck bowed his head. Crown Point the Buck bowed his head. Pinktail the opossum bowed. Mr. and Mrs. Beaver bowed. The lizard bowed, followed by the turtles, the frogs, like a wave moving through the crowd, more animals bowed until every head was lowered. They were, showing, they were showing respect for the woman who had created their dear friend, Roz, and who brought her back to them. Dr. Malovo turned to Roz. Do you understand why I can't return? She said, her eyes glistening. It's for your own good. I understand, said Roz. I only wish we had gotten to know each other a little better. 
Dr. Milovo smiled and pulled Roz into a hug. She didn't mind the robot's coat of mud and grass wrapped in each other's arms. They both felt something like love. You're the wild robot, said the woman. Go be wild. And we have two left. Okay, chapter 89, The Departure. Dr. Merlovo stepped aboard her airship and the door hummed closed. A moment later, the engines fired up and the crowd of wild creatures backed away. Then the ship rose above the island, turned to the south, and disappeared into the sky. There it is, taking off. Chapter 90, The Island. Our story ends on the island where a robot was returning to her wild way of life. Roz had escaped from the world of humans, and now she was free to be herself again. She could think and speak and do whatever she desired, and right now what she desired was simply to watch the sunset. With Bright Bill on her shoulder, Roz hiked past trees, meadows, streams, and climbed up, up, up the mountain to the very highest point of the island. Then our friend sat on the slanted rock rocks of the peak and watched the sun slowly sink behind the ocean. If you're like me, reader, you still have a lot of questions. How long will Roz live? Will she ever see another human or another robot? What joys and sorrows lie ahead for her? Roz still has some questions too, but now she has also had, but now she has, now, but now she also had some answers. Our robot knew where she came from. She knew the life she was supposed to live, and she knew the life she wanted to live. As Roz sat with Bright Bill, she slowly turned her head, scanning the island, taking it all in. The last rays of sunlight streaked across the treetops below. Animals scurried through the shadows. The air was fresh with the scent of flowers and of salt water. The sky began darkening and the crickets began chirping. The stars began twinkling. Everything was just right. Roz felt safe and happy and loved. The robot was home. And here is the last picture of them enjoying the sunset. And that is where our book ends. So um, I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed the ending like I did. Um, I'm going to post on Facebook a picture of the options for our next read aloud and I want you all to um, put in your vote because tomorrow I we need to make a choice so I have something to read to you next. Okay I hope you're having a wonderful day and I hope to see you all soon.